In this short video, I want to talk about the um, exam question the, um, from 2017 uh, regarding um, bond prices. And so this mini lecture was about bond prices and interest rates, right? With the key idea being that they move in an inverse direction to each other. That is bond that bond prices rise as the interest rate falls and vice versa. That the bond prices fall as the interest rate rises. So with that in mind, from this whole lecture here, this was the question that was asked back in 2017. And the statistics on this question show that only about a third of the students got uh, Part B correct. So from a more kind of pragmatic, um, more um, direct sense, um, the reason for this lecture was to basically remove that problem in answering part B. So with an understanding that they do move in the opposing directions, let's deal with number two. We've got an economy that is in its long run equilibrium. And the change that's happening is that consumers are gonna hold less money because they use their credit cards more frequently. Now, we could think of other reasons, like especially with um, COVID-19, um, one of the things that we found was that people bought things more online. So if people are buying things online, then they don't need to hold as much cash. Or even if they are um, uh, purchasing things physically in a store, what we saw was that people were concerned about the germs and whatnot, the unsanitary conditions of money, so they were holding less cash, right? And there was this big coin shortage, et cetera, et cetera. We can think of other reasons why people would hold less cash. So we're asked in part A to draw a correctly labeled graph of the money market and show the effect of the reduced holdings of money on the equilibrium nominal interest rate. The one thing I'll say here, is that the graders do care a great deal about this part right here. So do not be um, um, do not be careless with this part. You would want to do correctly label this. So let's let's do that. So Once we get this pen to work. So we would have quantity of money on our x-axis and we would have the nominal interest rate on the y-axis. The money supply would be completely vertical. And it would be completely vertical because it's fixed by the central bank in the economy, um, in our case, the Federal Reserve. And the original money demand curve is downward sloping. But again, the thing that happened was that people are now holding less cash because they're using credit cards more. How is So now we've got our correctly labeled graph. Now we need to show the effect of what happened. And that would be a reduction in the um, demand curve, a shift to the left of the demand curve. And what we would see here is that the nominal interest rate fell. Okay, so that's part A. So, I like doing a little check mark, makes us feel accomplished here. Now, we're asked, based on the change in the interest rate in part A, the fact that it was falling, what will happen in each of the following in the short run? 
the price of previously issued bonds, and then the price level in real income. Okay, so let's do that. And what we know, um, we don't even need to draw a graph for this part. If the nominal interest rate is falling, then what we know to be true is that the price of previously issued bonds will rise. And again, the reason why they will increase is because these bonds, the, the previously issued bonds, they're going to offer basically a higher interest rate relatively. And if they're offering a higher interest rate relatively, then you have to pay something for that. You have to offer a premium. You have to encourage someone to sell that really good bond that's offering that really high interest rate. So the, um, the price of that bond is going to rise as the interest rate is falling. So you'll have to offer a premium. Okay, now we need to know what's going to happen to the price level and the real income. We'll need to explain that. So in this case, if nominal interest rates are falling, To answer this, we're going to need to think about the economy in terms of the aggregate demand curve. So let's draw out what that. Now, you're not asked to draw this out, but it's helpful to draw it out because it, it will help organize your thoughts about, about what your answer would be in words. So for the aggregate demand curve, we're going to put the real GDP on the x-axis. That's, in essence, our quantity. And the price level is on our y-axis. The aggregate demand curve, which is equal to C plus I plus G plus NX, is downward sloping. And there's a number of ways you could think about this, but let's just do a very kind of simple... Um, short run aggregate supply curve, which is upward sloping, looking like this. Now, if the interest rate is falling, what that would do is it actually would cause investment to rise. Investment, remember, consists of buildings, machines, inventory of businesses, people buying a house. <laughs> All of those things are going to increase if the interest rate is falling. And if investment is rising, that's going to lead to the aggregate demand rising. Which we are going to see right there. Because now it's going to equal C plus I, which is now higher, plus G plus NX. Again, when I add that prime, that's just signifying that it changed. And what we can see here is that the price level is increasing. All right, so now we could write this up and explain what's going on that led us to conclude that the price level is rising. And then the other thing that we're asked about is the real income. What's going to happen to the real income? The real income is also rising. And we can see that real income. 
real income is also equal to real GDP, and real GDP is rising here. So the answer to this is that the price level is rising, and the real income level is rising. Okay. Okay. On to part C and D. So, um, continuing on here, if we have a constant money supply, and the um, answer to part B was that the price level was rising and the real income was rising. Based on that fact, with the constant money supply, what do we expect to happen to the velocity of money? Is it going to increase, decrease, remain the same, or do we not have enough information? So let's remind ourselves of what velocity is. Velocity That's just our definition of the number of times um, that money is changing hands. Or to be a little bit more formal, the number of times it circulates in the economy. And so with that, what we know is that the equation in general is that um, the money supply times the velocity is equal to the price level times the level of real GDP. And what we're told here in this part C is that the money supply is constant. And what we had solved in the previous subpart was that the price level was rising and that the real GDP level was rising which would then force the level of velocity to increase. So the answer is an increase in velocity. And then finally, part D, if the central bank is wishing to reverse the change in the interest rate that we had found in part A, what open market operation would it use? So, let's remind ourselves of what had happened. We had our quantity of money, we had our nominal interest rate, and that money demand had decreased as a result of people holding less cash and we had seen that fall in the interest rate then the Federal Reserve to, to counteract this would actually have to reduce the money supply because that's the only way I can then keep my interest rate the same or move it back up so I would have to reduce the money supply. To reduce the money supply, the Fed, the central bank, would need to sell bonds. That would be the open market operation uh, because that would, again, reduce the money supply. And as a result, as we can see in the graph here, it would um, start to increase the um, it would start to increase the um, interest rate and we would basically move along that money demand curve until they were equal and there we go